Yeah, I uh, so I've been looking at uh, the the process of polis. I don't know that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, yeah. would love to learn what's happened since uh, 2018 uh, mm -hmm, with that. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. but I should let Tristan drive. But I, I was just asking about polis and and kind of how it's gone in the last couple of years. Yeah, uh, it, it's went bilingual. We use it for diplomatic agenda setting. We run four digital dialogues with the de facto U.S. Embassy here, uh, the AIT, uh, and uh, we uh, together made um, a set of 40 recommendations so that uh, across, for example, making Taiwan more unique in the world, trade uh, relationships, security cooperation, people-to-people -people ties, uh, and that uh, made uh, the foreign service on both sides as well as the relevant ministry hold themselves accounts to talk with only the 10 most uh, powerful rough consensus uh, that is agreed by the people. And very interestingly, uh, the most divisive topics, for example, um, Taiwan should make English a working language, uh, is usually just being nuanced, uh, kind of more eclectic and turned into a consensus item, like Taiwan should uh, move toward becoming a bilingual nation uh, as, as much um, as possible. So, so basically, instead of now, uh, as soon as possible, and now is divisive, but as soon as possible is rough consensus. Uh, and so we, we see a lot of very interesting dynamic like that. I mean, you can learn all about it in the digital dialogues page. Oh, great. You have this. Is, I was going to ask you because it's funny. I, I Googled for your work, but I didn't know where to dig in. And so if you part mm -hmm. of one of my goals for this call would be just to have a sense of the key resources that best describe your work. Um, and sure. It's a small thing, but sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this is my uh, this is my office website. Uh, and there are three, click here for more, uh, just uh, that, uh, below the what do we do. Uh, and so um, the first one uh, connects to the participation officer network, which is this internal uh, horizontal network uh, where every ministry sends a team of people to work on open government and engagement. And we have like monthly meetings and our own collaboration meetings uh, that works on cross ministerial issues uh, and policy is just one of the tools that we use. Um, and the digital administration links to the CIVO IoT, which is a common sensing platform using public ledger for air quality, water quality, and so on with thousands, now tens of thousands of citizen contributors. It's one of the largest deployment of citizen science that actually gets into uh, public administration uh, decision making. And finally, participation governance. Um, there's a click here for more that links to the presidential hackathon, where every year we choose uh, five teams out of a hundred or so um, that uh, basically receive uh, incubation uh, in the 20 team stage. And those 20 teams were voted in through quadratic voting which is a grand one invention, um, well, reinvention, and then uh, five teams receive a trophy from the president, which is a micro projector that when turned on, shows the president's face promising the team that whatever they've prototyped in the past three months will become public policy within 12 months uh, with all the personnel and uh, budget and law required. Um, and so these three together are mechanisms uh, for social innovation uh, to lead uh, government change. Uh, and that I think is one of the more viable ways uh, for digital to make democracy more democratic. Now, uh, I'm just setting the kind of time frame. Uh, you have my undivided attention for two hours. Um, and so we don't have to be too rapid. Uh, we can just get to know each other better. But if you have other commitments, um, like if you don't have two hours, don't worry, we can always reconnect. I, I definitely have two hours. I will make time. <laughs> I, I have about an hour and five minutes from now. Um, so okay. Um, so maybe that, you should drive the first hour. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I hate to make you do kind of your the kindergarten version of your spiel, and you talk very quickly, and I know you're an engineer, so I sort of like, um, I, I don't want to bring you back to kind of the basics, but I, I'd love for us to orient a little bit of the group, so we're kind of speaking. No, I, I'm fine with repeating the basics. That, that's okay. how we know each other. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh -huh. um, and, but believe me, it will be worth it. I, I'm very excited to bring your work to both, you know, again, the audience of people that we reach here in Silicon Valley, because mm -hmm. we kind of take you know, all the existing mm -hmm. tech platforms as, as an audience, and then also um, governments that we are commonly communicating with. And I want to better understand your work because I've been mentioning it offhand, but I'd like to understand the mechanics, and especially mm -hmm. how you got there, because I know that you've built all these tools. And so now you're operating in this world where mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. But what was the process by which you mm -hmm. were able to get there? Maybe yeah, we'll, yeah. Before we dive into that is make a little mini agenda of the kind of things that we're curious about and wanting to dig into the biggest questions that we have 
and I'm sorry for the noise. Um, San Francisco. Portugal. No, it's fine. It's fine. I, I've got I, AirPair Pro. Uh, sorry, AirPods Pro, and it's uh, fine canceling noise on both sides. So <laughs> not really, but um, I, I don't get bothered by noise that much. Uh, the, the point here, uh, two points. First, I totally agree that maybe we just make a short agenda just on the chat room on the things that yeah. you would like to explore in the next hour. And the second is that in Taiwan, uh, we call programming is translated as in Mandarin program design, uh, not software engineering. So I don't consider myself an engineer. And by uh, translating that as uh, program design, we actually recruit more girls than boys because designers are mostly girls. So now we have to incentivize boys to be interested in programming, just a very interesting anecdote. That's awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, great. Well, um, Forrest, do you want to brief, I mean, I, it sounds like you've introduced yourself a little bit, but maybe to talk about some of the big questions you have and how you're thinking about this. I just view what Audrey's doing as mm -hmm. one of the largest well, standard versions of all the things that mm -hmm. you think about and care about. So, mm -hmm. so there's, yeah, sure. the, the broad arc is, I, I think, a shared interest in how to use digital tools to facilitate democratic process and to actually do that well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the, the processes that you've put in place, you know, to, to some extent, I want to learn a little bit about what you've learned as a result of implementing these things. Mm -hmm. And so yes. that we can basically figure out ways to maybe, if we can, to try to influence similar things to happen here. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my interest is essentially very parallel to yours in a sense of trying to design uh, the right kind of tools and infrastructure to support uh, you know, large groups of people to make really good choices about critical, critical things. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, mostly, you mentioned uh, your background at the Pentagon so that he has that context. Sorry, sorry, so Audrey has that context, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've, I've, I've been a contractor for the government. I've, it, it, and when I say government, I'm talking United States uh, military for the most part. Um, and so in effect, I, I was involved in a number of projects having to do a search engine design and uh, was the architect for a system that basically became uh, fairly prominent among the different agencies to try to share information and to do uh, sense-making kind of things. Um, and, and so, you know, in a lot of ways, the, the interest that I had was essentially, you know, world well-being right from the, right from the beginning, although uh, I think the United States itself had a somewhat smaller scope in terms of their own well-being. Um, but but just, just so that you get a sense as to, um, you know, I've been doing architecture and design in this space for a while, as have you yourself. And, um, and, Basically, there's a, uh, an, an interest in trying to, to, to learn kind of what the on-the-ground experience of the, of the sort of design concepts that, that have informed the tools and, and, and how that uh, experience of using this in democracy has, has, has been informed over its actual applications. Um, so that, 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 that as I'm doing design in this same, I, I, I think of design as, as essentially maybe a similar way as you is to, to, to think about both the relationship between uh, humans and machines and, and, and mostly between humans. Um, but, but basically to be looking at how do we do, um, you know, governance, you know, by the people, for the people, of the people in, in, a, in a way that uh, technology enables us to get past some of the biases, some of the kinds of uh, social processes that in the West are uh, really disabling and, and, and that have, have, have basically divided our country. So, so in effect, we, I, I see the United States as misusing technological process to our own harm. And that some of the things that you've been doing is essentially actually really good examples of how to use technology in ways that actually help. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be sure that, that I'm as informed, my, my overall agenda in this conversation is to learn you know, both your thinking and the, the sort of the, the experiential information that might not have, have, have been as easy to convey in, in, in things online so that, that, that I make better choices trying to do similar things uh, as you. Okay, so that's design concepts and journey of pro-social democracy processes in digital governance context. Yes. Do, we, do we have more uh, agenda uh, items? I would be very interested piling, piling on to what Forrest just mentioned on how you address issues of cognitive bias and group dynamics. So what we know about when like-minded groups gather together, their views mm -hmm. get more extreme if you let them uh, talk uh, amongst themselves. Um, how do you, uh, related to that, I know you've sort of had this gamifying consensus, or let me put it a different way, anti-polarization design patterns. So mm -hmm. ways that people would naturally polarize. How do you anti-polarize when that's already the case? One of the problems we have here in the United States is that we've undergone an artificial amplification polarization process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in how do you reverse that? And I have a mm -hmm. sense that you have a strong 
um, experience about how to do that. Um, I know one of which is the game of, I'm using the word gamification, but I know mm -hmm. that of consensus driven processes. Um, mm -hmm. so that's one of the other areas that. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity, Tristan. So I, I, I just literally spent a lot of time learning about the about some of the systems in this space, but I don't know mm -hmm. very much about them. So, mm -hmm. so how how familiar are you with the Polis, uh, P O L dot I S uh, system? Yes. Mm -hmm. Only through some of the vague, you know, BBC articles and things like that that I've read okay. uh, about it. Because so. because. Uh -huh. Because I'm, I'm trying to basically also gauge, like, a, an agenda item would be for me, would be to learn what mm -hmm. other systems in addition to that, mm -hmm. what oh, there, there's several. Would do mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. what, what you would do differently uh, next time around. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you had to do it again, what would you do differently? Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, essentially, um, is there a, a, a way in which new systems or new work has done mm -hmm. that has moved from statements to questions? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, plenty. That would be Great. awesome. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, just to mentally make a list for me by the end of the call, of what are things you wish the whole world and the Facebooks and the major tech platforms of the world knew? Mm -hmm. Not because like I think that Facebook should implement everything you're doing, but in the sense that um, what's possible that people don't think is possible, summarizing these lessons, the ways that you would, if you were to critique some of the existing platforms, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. that might be. Because I'm kind of constructing a meta agenda of things that I would like to record with you in a podcast environment later. So that's another thing I'm kind of tracking. So, okay. So, uh, like, what's possible for FB to uh, to further, I don't know, civic integrity or something like that? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. If you were running Facebook civic integrity team for 2.7, mm -hmm. actually closer to three three billion people now, mm -hmm. um, what? <laughs> um, what, how, how might you think about the applicability of the things you've discovered mm -hmm. and the things that you mm -hmm. would, I, know I'm, I would never do it this way, I would think about mm -hmm. it a different way. And the mm -hmm. basic thinking and modeling that would inform that difference mm -hmm. um, would be really interesting to, to learn. Okay, fun, fun, fun anecdote. Uh, I've actually interviewed with the Facebook Civic Integrated team on this very topic, and the whole transcript is available. So um, oh, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll make a short summary, but, but it's, it's there. Okay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, yeah. And, and anything else, Fallen Forest? Well, like I said, just the relationship between um, questions and, and statements, like how you might have, like, if you had to do it again, what would you do uh, differently um, in this, in mm -hmm. the sense, like if, given the knowledge that you have, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. what, what would be the things that you, that, that you've observed would be, oh, we want to account for this given that we're starting more from a, a blank slate, I mean, I'd hope that, mm -hmm. but it's not actually the case, but, but if we were starting from a blank mm -hmm. slate, what would mm -hmm. be the key lessons that we would want to integrate to bring it up to the, to the next level? Okay, okay. Uh, well, that's, that's literally uh, what we're doing uh, today with this participation officer uh, network uh, consensus meeting. Uh, and so with, uh, we have a recursive process that uh, continues to uh, improve ourselves. So I can share with you uh, on that, uh, of course. So, so a uh, like recursive public and, uh, and where to find them. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, where to build them. Uh, okay. What ways can we be of support to you? Uh -huh, uh -huh. That would be very helpful to know uh, as well, obviously. Okay. So, um, all right. So that's that's it. Uh, we'll we'll just quickly go through them and maybe uh, a, a breath first uh, way, and then um, we can just get into like zoom <laughs> into it uh, whenever uh, you feel like, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay, all right. So um, you see my um, kind of uh, drawing, right? Yes. Uh, okay, this is great. Okay, um, Zoom is still pretty reliable as things go. Okay, so um, yeah. So uh, the first thing is about the design concepts uh, of pro-social democracy processes in the digital governance context, um, and the very simple uh, way of saying this. Um, is um, just look to look at my office. Uh, and so this is literally my office, uh, the Social Innovation Lab. Um, and I firmly believe that a physical place like this with plenty of food um, that uh, opens until 11 p.m. Uh, is the root of everything. And we tore down the walls here. It used to be Air Force headquarters. Um, everybody can just walk in and have 40 minutes of my time um, at, on every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to the evenings uh, and just, just um, bringing wisdom 
terms of the toys, like those self-driving tricycles, uh, and trying to uh, fit um, those new technologies uh, norms, uh, which no, uh, you know, nobody knows what, what they are about, they're like aliens, um, into uh, fitting the nearby market, a flower market, so that everybody can, through open source and open innovation, to change them into whatever way the society feels like. So this sandbox uh, coupled with direct access to ministers, um, as well as my radical transparency uh, protocol, uh, which uh, shows that after I've become the digital minister for the past three and a half years, um, there's more than 5,000 people uh, in more than 1,000 meetings, and each and every single one of them, uh, you can find a complete uh, transcript, which we um, co-edit after 10 days uh, before publishing. And in meetings such as with David Bluth, uh, speaking for Uber at the time, uh, we make sure that it's not only on the record, it's on 360 record, so you can put on VR and relive. Um, the conversation. And the whole point of uh, doing this uh, pro-social democracy context is to ensure that anybody who make arguments uh, that furthers their interest must make so within a global goals perspective. Because uh, of radical transparency, it doesn't pay to argue for their private lobby interest that is only good for them, but assign externalities to the society or environment. Rather, because of radical transparency, everybody is kind of like uh, completing a puzzle together. Uh, and the effective partnership are shaped this way because every Everybody, including David Bluth, can only make pro-social arguments instead of anti-social arguments in this lobbying context. So this is our face-to-face -face context, and, and that's kind of uh, um, section one. Yes. Can you um, explain? So you're saying, if I'm understanding you correctly, the way that you're ensuring a pro-social um, motivation and conversation mm -hmm. is someone essentially they, they get to only index and saying, I want to have a conversation with you about SDG number 17. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Or that's exactly right. So everything that uh, we talk for uh, with. Uh, is within this context. So um, basically, uh, for example, David Plouffe uh, tried to make an argument based on climate change mitigation, and that will be 13. Uh, or maybe uh, he tried to make an argument saying that this will enable more rural places to have access to transportation, that will be uh, 11. Uh, and things like that. So we ensure that everything we do is indexed in SDG manners and all those social innovation uh, organizations that come to visit me, eventually uh, I encourage them to register so that at any given time you can see um, any number of priorities uh, within Taiwan. And for example, we'll choose a nearby Taoyuan uh, city, uh, there's English version, uh, that uh, focus on these uh, in their voluntary local um, uh, report, uh, the VOR, but also you can see that all the social innovation organizations, it could be co-ops, it could be um, associations, uh, foundations, and companies uh, working on which uh, SDGs uh, there are, and also their natural um, counterparts uh, in other parts of Taiwan. So the whole point is to build an ecosystem based on those shared goals, and that's not only on the 17 level, but rather on the 169 level with concrete targets. Mm -hmm. And how did you, it's very interesting that you're, I mean, it's like you got to pick an ontology, so you're, you're picking a value system and you're, the value system you're picking is SDG, mm -hmm. name, global number, global goal, goals, goal, yes, global goals, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, was there a reason you picked that as a basis and versus, you know, I mean, obviously it's a nice convenient um, mm -hmm. shorthand and, and shared shorthand. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about that? It's very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason uh, first is that it, it can uh, enable me to describe my own work in just three simple numbers, right? So I'm working on 1718 Reliable Data, 1717 Cross-Sectoral International Partnership, and 176 Open Innovation. And, and this is kind of a universal language in which that I don't have to go back uh, to the drawing board uh, whenever I meet a policymaker. I can just uh, give them those three numbers and they can look them up themselves. Although we changed the usual diagram of kind of Maslow's um, pyramid into this Venn diagram uh, to ensure that digital is what um, uh, we bring digital to the society and uh, bring together the society using the digital, which is something like this, uh, rather than saying that we're somehow uh, more spiritual or whatever, which is the usual schemata. So we changed the uh, official UN schemata a, a little bit. So that's the practical application. Now for the philosophy, uh, this is uh, important in the context of Taiwan, because Taiwan is not a UN member, uh, neither is we member of many other uh, international organizations. So first of all, that give the 
us um, a unique perspective, like if we're not players, we're maybe referees. But the other point is that the uh, UN uh, process ensured that uh, all the uh, geopolitical contentional uh, subjects, such as indigenous um, transitional justice, are not within the sustainable goals. That is to say, the sustainable development goals is this politic free zone uh, in which that every uh, member of the UN um, agreed and as well as all the major groups that these are the things that has the most synergy instead of uh, just um, you know canceling each other out in terms of force and so that ensures when we do international participations we can say um, Taiwan can help uh, which is our main hashtag, by the way, um, without worrying about uh, the negative repercussions that it may have in other jurisdictions that may be on the table. So this is literally my name card and that says Town Can Help. That's awesome. Interesting. So I hope that makes sense. And I'll move to the digital parts. So uh, the pro-social democratic uh, context, um, as you see, is based on the idea of radical transparency, meaning transparency at the root. And behind uh, radical transparency uh, is this um, proud tradition of internet governance of rough consensus or humming. Uh, and humming uh, is uh, seen uh, in Taiwan as um, a, uh, a very important word here, which is uh, common sense or common understanding, uh, literally uh, gong shi. Uh, and this is, um, gong is literally shared, uh, and shi is understanding or sensing. Mm. Uh, and, and this usually translates as consensus, but this is not consensus. Because in, in English, uh, consensus is something that you can sign your name on, or, or and something that you prefer. Uh, but uh, shared understanding is only something you can live with, uh, something that you agree not to uh, work actively against. Um, and so it's a, a rough consensus, like very rough consensus. And by aiming for a very rough consensus or a shared understanding, this is a lower threshold for participation because we can always move a little bit forward uh, instead of uh, just um, having to fight uh, on the different positions uh, right right there. And so, um, and now this is a very good um time to bring polis um, because uh, in a digital pro-social setting uh, the initial journey of our conversation um, was in 2015 uh, and as uh, Forrest know this was uh, the UberX uh, graph and so everybody at that time looks at uh, this four clusters uh, uh, k-means clustering um, and uh, two um, orthogonal um, axes, the X and Y axis, are um, computed through principal component analysis to automatically highlight the most divisive um, two dimensions of the preference space uh, dynamically, like in real time. So you see this reconfigured as you play the game of pressing agree or disagree on each other's statements. And as you do, you move toward uh, people who feel like you, but also the whole graph uh, reconfigures to identify new clusters. This is the same Netflix recommendation algorithm and so um, the two design uh, concepts the first is no there's no reply button uh, in all the tools that we use there is no reply button because uh, with reply button comes trolls and name calling uh, but without reply button there's less ways for trolls to grow and the second design concept is that we highlight diversity rather than headcount so if you mobilize 5,000 people to vote exactly the same way then maybe you get an additional zero here um, but uh, you don't get a larger area because the area here measures the diversity of opinions, not uh, the, the headcount. When you say here, sorry, were you gesturing at something and I missed it? I was looking away. Yes, yes, I was, I was gesturing at this polygon. Oh, that one. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, the, 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 the cluster, uh, mm -hmm. the, the size of the cluster. Mm -hmm. The size and of the cluster think, do not the, reflect the, the people, the, the headcount. So you said that the, 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 the um, the thing that denotes the importance or significance is the diversity of people agreeing, mm -hmm. not the number of people saying, uh, or sorry, how, how do you express that exactly? Yes, so um, the area of each cluster depends on the diversity within that cluster instead of the head count. And at the end, we hold ourselves to account to talk about the intergroup consensus, meaning, that only these statements on the left is held as a accountable agenda 
for the uh, authority, competent authority to respond to uh, through a multi-stakeholder forum. We ignore uh, these in terms of agenda. So everybody knows which are the divisive statements where well, they only have to look at the news um, to see the divisive statements, but uh, we only focus our energy, our attention on the intergroup consensus, meaning like this is a real conversation that's had in Kentucky, uh, USA, um, and whether they identify as Democrat or Republican, everybody agrees that instead of uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, there needs to be art uh, in this picture, that the arts are an important part of STEM, uh, and that uh, has cross-party, bipartisan, actually really not really related to partisan support. And if we hold ourselves only um, as um, accounts for these uh, issues, the mayor that holds this multi stakeholder forum can very easily get legitimacy uh, without being uh, swamped uh, into this divisive statement. So it's a way for the crowd to be aware of itself, a reflective space um, that uh, are automatically pro-social. And digital governance is just a way to amplify this. Uh, you can do this face-to-face, -face, but you can do this face-to-face -face with maybe only 100 people or 200 if you're a good facilitator. But this is a way that you can do easily 10 times or 100 times more people. What, how many people are participating in a process like this online? This is that's what's amazing about what you're doing is normally I have been skeptical about, mm -hmm. I'm sure Gordon can speak to this too, but sort of like wanting to keep things mm -hmm. in smaller scale, the mm -hmm. Dunbar scales and recombining, but you're, mm -hmm. the fact that you're doing this online without the face-to-face -face trust building or even mm -hmm. a corresponding face-to-face -face mm -hmm. component. Well, so yeah, I'm, there is a live stream face-to-face multi-stakeholder component at the end of this process. Essentially, mm -hmm. uh, what we uh, say is crowdsourced agenda setting. We set the agenda for a face-to-face -face conversation through digital means, but the binding process is always a face-to-face or, um, well, you can do it through telecommunication, which I'll get to later, but a synchronous, a high fidelity um, conversation that's based on those crowdsourced part time, uh, like everybody have two minutes of uh, kindness uh, agenda. And so, um, yes, so as for participation rate, so our national participation platform, which is joined the GOV.TW, um, is um, both um proposals that is to say e-petition is also regulatory pre-announcements is also uh oversight in terms of budget um um kpis as well as the um delivery uh so that you can see very easily uh what are the most interesting projects like long-term healthcare, sanitation social housing uh and things like that and if you click into each and every one uh the system also makes recommendation like if you're interested in long-term health care maybe you want to join these petitions and so on so basically it combines uh, what used to be like four different websites in the u.s government like we the people regulations.gov um, and things like that and uh, into a single interface and this interface has more than 10 million uh, visitors uh, in taiwan considering taiwan is just 23 million people that means half of the population and the most active uh, age groups are around 15 years old and 60 to 65 years old uh, meaning that people who have more more time on their hands and for the 15 years old, uh, no right to vote, uh, have more um, incentive to participate actively on the platform. But um, everybody um, in between uh, also, because in Taiwan we have broadband as human rights, um, also uh, can just keep a tab on what's happening without contributing too much of their time, uh, kind of just following it. And for those followers, those visitors, we have 10 million out of 23 million. That's amazing. I have one quick question before someone jump in after, but um, how, you, you, you said diversity obviously was the key sort of factor. But how do you, what is your definition of diversity? In the way you're right. So um, here I say diversity of opinions. Right. So diversity means uh, any statement uh, in a in this polis context, any uh, statement that elicits a different response pattern as compared to every other statement, meaning that um, it's not just a synonym or just a party line, but rather it carves out a different agree or disagree uh, pattern across the people so that people can see that they're not sharply divided along existing lines, but can actually agree on the shared values despite their different positions. And these value statements are the most valuable. Wow. So it's, it's literally, it's the diversity of the way that people respond to a statement. Yeah, that is like uh, ideal diversity, like biodiversity, right? It's the diversity in the idea scape. Mm -hmm. So, so 
in, yes. the, in the hyperspace of all possible patterns, essentially the what 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 encloses the most space. Yes, that's exactly right. That's uh, exactly the case. And also, um, this space is reflective. So unlike uh, normal voting, which is three bits every four years from everyone, uh, uh, those bits are a uh, kind of secret ballot uh, was the um, design constraint. But in this uh, case, everybody's uh, output is con con uh, continuously being reflected uh, in this space. So you can see the graph change in real time. And that actually is the most important part because it gets everybody uh, into this picture. Uh, and this picture uh, basically is a picture of democracy, uh, meaning that uh, people uh, see that they are the same polity instead of being trapped in the future bubbles. Because really people are a polity, it's just the media and social media highlights more of the division instead of the consensus. Mm -hmm. So one, one question that I, that I would love to just open, just, just, to, just to explore, because I, I, I noticed that the that the, 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 the platform really hinges upon statements that people could or agree or disagree with. Um, right. What I've been playing with in some of my own work is how questions and statements interact with one another. Right. And I wonder if there has been uh, yes. some way in which uh, questions as a kind of coordinating basis for conversations uh, yes. have been integrated into this tool or other tools. And and, yes. and it's just it's an open question. I'm not I'm not saying there's a right answer. I'm just I'm just, I, that, that's a place mm -hmm. I've been wanting to look at and, and I'm wondering what mm -hmm. you found there. Yes, uh, and we did. Uh, and this is the, the uh, issue mapping um, technology that we use uh, as the next step uh, from, from Polis. Um, so um, so how, how, how much time do you still have? Um, I mean... Uh, I'm good until um, for another 40 minutes probably. I, okay. I also, this is so interesting and important. I may cancel what I have next, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. So. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'm really, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so blown away. I mean, you, you, I know you get lots of praise, but it's very, very uh, cool and important what you're doing. I'm really yeah. Yeah. grateful. And I, I wish the world could model what you're doing faster, which is why I'm so interested in getting the word out about it. Um, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Right. So, um, so here uh, we see uh, our own facilitation process. Uh, using issue mapping. Uh, and so PETIS uh, is our office, the public digital innovation space. Uh, and this is kind of the tool that we use uh, that uh, to kind of categorize our current projects, our approach, our vision. And then this is the uh, go actual value, exposed value artifacts um, drawing. Uh, actually, there's bound to be English version. I'll get you an English version uh, soon. But uh, anyway, um, as you can see, um, the point here uh, is not to, uh, for statements, to um, kind of capture the preference space by its own, but rather this is a way to categorize the statements into, as I said, how close um, to um, shared values there are. If it's a truly shared value, then it's a goal. Uh, if it is a value that you can uh, assign kind of um, preference to it as a actual value. Uh, if it's a value that you can communicate, that's exposed value. And if it's not a value at all, it's a, just a statement, then it's a artifact. Um, and so this uh, kind of concentric ring um, can be also expanded uh, in two dimensional space uh, like this. Uh, and this is actually what we usually do in our face-to-face -face meetings. So by the time that we get to the face-to-face -face meetings, the police um, statements are no longer um, just uh, clustered uh, that way, but rather uh, what we're uh, essentially doing, um, and I'm um, sorry, I don't have an English example here, but I'll just let you um, see this um, general shape of things. So, so usually, um, I think I'll just show the legend. Uh, so we categorize uh, the individual statements um, into uh, the objective, uh, which is blue, uh, the reflective, um, which is yellow, uh, the ideational, uh, which is green, uh, and the decisional, uh, which is uh, brown, uh, and the blockers, which, which are red. Um, and so the point here uh, of this ORID or focus conversation method uh, process is that people can easily see how those statements uh, relate to one another and you can move them in real time as new arguments surface uh, during this face-to-face -face meeting uh, with online participation uh, parts. And so what's uh, actually um, um, done in practice is that whenever we have a um, new uh, brainstorming or what we call collaboration meeting, um, 
we have the participation officers first vote every month on the two things that they, they would like to uh, do um, a conversation in a multi-stakeholder way. For example, there was a case where uh, people said the text filing experience is explosively hostile. And then we invite everybody who complain about it on um, join.gov.tw, um, like this is a designer that originally complained about it. And then uh, you see these uh, individual statements on join or on police being laid on the table. Uh, and uh, we use a um, digital twin of that picture so that you can um, then see online exactly what's being put on the table uh, laid out in the text filing case as a user journey, as a mess, um, and uh, which covers the before and during and after of text filing. But then we can do the co-creation across each uh, column, which is each step of the process. So we redesigned the text filing system together, and that was uh, won last time 98% of approval, which is unheard of in government technology and services, uh, mostly because there's thousands of people who say I have contributed at least one post-it note uh, to that tech filing system. Or um, in terms of a more complex stakeholder group, uh, you can see a much more um, complicated uh, issue map mapping um, idea. So uh, it, it's there's different ways like concentric circles, uh, trees, and user journey, how those post-it notes can be laid out. But the um, a simple thing uh, that hosts them in a strand is this underlying focus conversation method that lets people see um, how close to universal values and personal values and communication, uh, communicable app values and artifacts there are in such a context. And so people feel like they're completing a puzzle together rather than just being um, drawn uh, by those different statements into different dimensions. So in a sense, it's a dimensional reduction through this uh, very deliberate way of building a issue context out of existing diversity. I think you're, you're muted first. I'm going to I'm going to go over the recording of this and and, and try to make sure that I, I I gather more of the nuance. Is there a white paper or yes, there is uh, something? Could could you? I, I would love to learn more about that whole segment that you just talked about. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of just like how the principles work together, like what are the, like like you've just spoken some of the underlying ideas. I'm going to go over the recording so you don't have to repeat yourself. Mm -hmm. But, but mm -hmm. this, is, this is of great interest to me, and I would very mm -hmm. much like to learn more about this. Sure. So uh, the, the underlying technology, as I said, is issue mapping and uh, focused conversation method. And these two are uh, very well established in the uh, literatures. Uh, but the particular way we're using it uh, is in the participation officer um, guidelines. Uh, and there's also uh, three conversations with Tom Atley. Uh, that I talk about um, the uh, application and Tom Atley himself uh, is actually um, a one of the pioneers in these methods. And so if you read the Tom Atley uh, blogs, which is in info.vtaiwan.tw, uh, that will uh, probably provide useful input uh, in the kind of day-to-day -day, um, conversations and how we deploy them in day-to-day -day conversations. I, I actually know of Tom Atley's work. I, I have a pallet of his books uh, rescued from from a, 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 a. So he's he's been a colleague. I just oh. the, the the particular. I didn't realize. I, I haven't been tracking the intersection between the work that you're doing and the work that he's doing. I knew that there was some overlap, uh, but this is very mm -hmm. exciting to hear that that he has been directly informing this process. So so at this point, mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm trying to basically learn is uh, what ideas of his you have actually applied. Uh, if mm -hmm. you could just send me links to those conversations that you had with mm -hmm. him, or I just um, did. It's, it's, it's in the chat room. It's in the chat room. Yeah, the, it's the second link. If you scroll okay. to the bottom, uh, you will see Tom Adley's photo. Great. I will grab that yeah. and use that. Um, uh -huh. That is very, very encouraging. I'm very, I'm very glad. I'm glad to hear that because Tom Atley's work has been, uh, at least in my mind, not well. Not not w nearly well mm. enough represented in the world, and so to to, to hear that this is happening uh, mm. is is incredibly encouraging. So just I just am really glad to hear. Right, so we probably have to rejoin this Zoom uh, conversation because of this time constraint thing, um, because I'm using my personal accounts, but it, it's okay. I, I think it's the same uh, Zoom URL anyway. So I'll just briefly uh, pause the recording, uh, and then we can just join it again. It's, it's okay. the same link. Okay, uh, and I'll just copy the 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 uh, chat 
so that uh, we don't lose the, the chat room. Okay, oh, right. so see, see you in a minute. So we'll cancel this one and we'll join again. Yeah, yeah you, you can just um, click cancel because it, it times out by its own, I think, in a, right. in like 50. And Great. we're back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I was, I was just, I'm super glad to hear uh, that, that piece. So I'm, I'm definitely, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm treating this as a kind of exploratory conversation just so that I know what homework I should do so that next time we meet, I am, uh, more respectful of your time, and no, 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 no. Um, so so the, the the next piece that I would love to hear a little bit more about. Mm -hmm. um, so so if I were to take uh, like the entire sort of action of the government. So so in other mm -hmm. words, if I if I take the the whole process, and I think about it in the sense of how much has been um, basically. Uh, integrated as far as you know people and technology to basically do binding choices on what actually happens in governance mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 so the question is roughly uh, what percentage of the overall governance process is now mediated through mm -hmm. uh, these technologies these platforms the, the sort of democratic engagement how, how much has has in mm -hmm. a sense uh, direct, uh, direct democracy become part of the overall process Mm -hmm. of what we would call legislation or executive action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, in Taiwan, uh, we have a system where um, the president is directly elected and the president nominates the prime minister and which nominates the cabinet. So we in the cabinet um, are um, kind of removed twice uh, from the parliamentary dynamics. So there's more independent uh, ministers uh, than ministers of any political party. Uh, and <clears throat> especially in my level, which is horizontal ministers, um, it's mostly independents. And the horizontal ministers um, survive prime minister changes. Uh, many of us survived uh, cabinet regime presidential changes too. Uh, and so the, the point here is that we're a comparatively politically neutral um, place uh, to make such conversations and that is essential. So I'm not saying that any other parliamentarian system can just copy our system directly. It is possible if there is bipartisan support that uh, in a purely presidential system like the US that this can be carried indefinitely. Um, although I, I hope the US gets to that point at some point. But in any case, the, the, the point here is that 100% uh, of the, um, the regulations that we make from the administration which is authorized by law and doesn't have to uh, be uh, congressionally uh, approved, as well as um, I think over half uh, of uh, our proposed bills to the parliament goes through the process on join.gov.tw. Uh, and the bills that didn't go to this process um, usually are ones that are uh, technical amendments to existing laws that has no repercussions uh, on international trade or on just, uh, you know, um, stakeholders that are, are like we already know the stakeholders, the stakeholders already are part of the lawmaking process, but uh, all regulations go through this uh, process. So in, in, indeed, it's just like regulations.gov. Um, in the US, all the regulations need to go through the 60 days process too. The only difference that we um, differ from the regulation.gov um, is that this has a um, group participation signaling component, whereas in regulation.gov uh, is mainly people calling, people um, copy and pasting the same uh, comments, people uh, just, um, you know, sending uh, noise and like astroturfing instead of signals, uh, and I can go on uh, to the public commentary system. Uh, in Taiwan's case, we make sure that the government um, gets mostly signals and not noise. 
And also uh, because we have this participation office and that well, whenever there is a cross ministerial issue, like two uh, pre-announced regulations that are at odds with each other, then we incorporate uh, these different ministries into multi-stakeholder conversation that resolve those tensions. And finally, um, people can at any given time through e-petition, if they get 5,000 signatures to put a stop or to turn a different direction on those uh, regulations as well as policies. And so that are the main differences compared to the U.S. system, but we uh, use essentially the same uh, legal underpinning, that is the freedom of information, as well as um, regulatory pre-announcement uh, on uh, just universalizing uh, this um, mechanism. That is uh, exceptionally encouraging. Um, I'm definitely, uh, there's there's certain inspiration there, I think that uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely feeling from that. So um, in regards to the uh, the, the sort of tools that you use. So, so you've mentioned this, um, this sort of conversational uh, mapping. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember right. the name that was given. At right. the, top. the issue, the issue mapping tool. The issue uh, mapping tool, right? So there's, so there's, that's a, that's a component. That's like a key technology that's used mm -hmm. as part of the conversation. Uh, yes. We talked about Polis uh, briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. What would be the other major tools that that, mm -hmm. that are currently? Um, sort of central focus in, in mm -hmm. terms of how the overall dynamic of the of right. the culture works. Okay, so the, the other one that we uh, use in addition to the uh, IMI uh, issue mapping uh, as well as uh, POLIS is called uh, Slido. Uh, and Slido is a commercial tool. Uh, we didn't code it up uh, ourselves and we use it um, like I maintain personally the, the um, traditional Chinese conversation uh, uh, translation of, of Slido, uh, I mean the system, uh, and we use it for pretty much all the town hall style meetings that we use. The thing is with town hall style meetings is that like imagine there's hundreds or even a thousand people in the audience. The projector is somewhat far away. Everybody has a phone, but the phone is not large enough to display issue mapping. Um, and unlike Polis, you only have one hour or two. You don't have th three weeks for those ideas to rever reverberate. So you need something that kind of maps the issues and set priorities. You need something that lets people signal, but you don't have the luxury of either space or screen um, uh, for the proper Polis IMI um, process to run. Uh, and so what do you do? Uh, you use Slido. And so uh, Slido, um, I had a um, conversation recently uh, with uh, the Milan uh, interaction um, design uh, conference, where I literally had a, a real-time conversation with the whole room um, by asking them to go on Slido and just uh, input whatever on their mind and like each other's comments if uh, any of them uh, are likable uh, by the audience. And so with a huge amount of people in the audience, you can kind of just feel the, the collective will of the audience in real time. And that is how then I basically change uh, every sentence that I say in midway in response to the uh, trending. Uh, voices on the Slido system. And so that enables a kind of synchronous um, agenda setting that is like Polis, but in a much more real-time strategy where a Polis is more like term-based strategy. Um, and so that is how I use Slido. And it's slido.com. You can easily see it online. So I will spare you the, the details, uh, but uh, we use Slido very well. Slido? Uh, Slido, Slido.com. Uh, and uh, the other good thing about Slido um, is that uh, it allows for pseudonymous um, commenting. And also it has pretty good automatic uh, filters to make sure that people ask questions only instead of just copy and pasting uh, random uh, exclamation marks. Um, so what Slido is doing uh, is uh, I will project a image of Slido on the large projector where people can see the most trending as well as the newest sentiments or questions. And I just highlight them one at a time, and then I just go through them and uh, uh, respond to them in real time. So it's a way to have a conversation with the room if it's a synchronous setting. Um, the other tools, uh, which is uh, Say It, and you already know that, I already show it to you, is our uh, archive keeping tool, uh, in, in which case you can see all the context of, of things. And there's, of course, also 360 live streaming, uh, telepresence, telerobotics, um, hologram, ghost projection, and things like that. But these are more um, trivial 
uh, the, the real collective intelligence tools are mostly issue mapping Slido and Polis and also the joint platform itself, which uh, has this um, um, columns of pro and con arguments. And again, you cannot reply to one another. So yeah, the, the unifying concept of those four tools, join Slido, IMI and Polis is that there is no reply button. So one of the things that, that I hear very specifically um, in, the, in the no reply piece is, is, is first of all, to kind of act as a counter ants against trolls, so to, mm -hmm. to prevent people from essentially just uh, using it as essentially an acceleration of motion for you know, the most charismatic or the essentially the loudest or the most um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. aggressive voices to sort of take over the town hall meeting. Yes. But, but there's, it, it, it feels like somehow there's also, and, and, and I'm, I haven't looked at Slido yet, so I don't know, but is there something that essentially means that, that, that what a person is writing is not necessarily becoming public to the whole group? Or is it like, what, what prevents a person from essentially using it as a kind of private publishing media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, yeah, to sort of try to question. take over with, with conversation, take over the conversation using kind of rhetoric devices or ad hominem mm -hmm. or the kind of things that normally derail uh, mm -hmm. Groups of people from not being like completely triggered and 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 excited into some sort of mob frenzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to yeah. add on to that question before you answer it because um, yes. the related question I had was um, how you accomplish what you do. I don't know if you have a different kind of ID passport type system where people have to mm -hmm. log in with government ID. Like, how do you prevent? Because one of the big issues with the U.S. based tech platforms is that there's just really just lots of bad actors starting. You know, there's as you know, there's dark markets where you can buy vintage early virgin, you know, Twitter accounts from the account creation dates of 2009. And you can just buy these things by the, by the millions. And then um, you can just, you can, anyway, the point being, because we can't verify ID, that creates all these other problems. And what I'm curious about is, do you also have a lockdown trust ID system or is like the kind of social design elements of no reply buttons, et cetera, enough to kind of just disincentivize bad actors. In other words, you could have millions of people registering millions of fake accounts but they just won't get very far based on the social design of the system, which is fascinating because essentially you're saying without an ID, you can do it. So that's kind of, I wanted to add on to that. How do you just prevent the kind of bad dynamics hurting muscle conjugation, outrage, ad hominem, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, both very good questions. So yeah, and um, China, I'm assuming is, is actually trying to game your systems as best they can, um, trying to manipulate your process. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. How do you, do you deal with that? Oh yeah, well, um, it's, uh, actually harder if you run this on Facebook, but we also have a playbook for, for Facebook because Facebook, it's, um, it's not our own design, right? It's tilted toward the trolls ways. Um, and, but we, we, we can, um, we have a playbook that uh, takes care of even Facebook, but uh, let, let's start from the, the easy parts. So uh, like, um, so let me just show you a, a real Slido conversation because that's um, always easier. Um, the um, Slido conversation that you see now uh, for some value of now uh, is uh, the one that I had um, in Osaka, that is to say uh, in DEF CON. Uh, and so it's less, um, it's less polarized uh, for obvious reasons because these are Ethereum hackers, um, but you probably can see that there is still some diversity in the questions uh, that's asked, uh, and some of them quite politically polarizing, uh, and some of them just, you know, um, pretty random, um, and so on. And so the, the point of the, the Slido um, interface is that there is just so much visual bandwidth, uh, limited visual bandwidth. <clears throat> so there are things that are kind of immediate, uh, <clears throat> is the kind of motions that, um, for example, there's one that says, turn off light, please, because the light before the projector um, is a little bit uh, strong. And, and so people on the back cannot see the projector. And for these, we just, uh, because they, will appear first on the latest question uh, column, which is the column at the, uh, sorry, the row uh, in the bottom. So what we do is essentially just turn off the light uh, by highlighting that particular statement, uh, which floats it to the top. Uh, and I hope you can see how this works in real time. I just click this up error, and then it goes to the top. 
and everybody can see that this kind of takes over the agenda in an emergency. And then I just um, turn off the light. And once I turn off the light, I can archive it. And so people see that the light is turned off and you have a better visibility uh, into the statements. And people who join the room later can always scan the QR code. Uh, and join the conversation. So there's no easy early mover um, advantage to dominant conversation because the latecomers can always just post their latest question for other people to vote on. And the uh, um, people who ask follow-up questions uh, only have one line to ask. So to answer Forrest's question, if somebody uses it as their blog, it will actually be counterproductive for them because we only see the last line of the blog. There's also a uh, limit on characters. Uh, so it's like a tweet uh, and only the latest one gets featured on the bottom. So it doesn't pay too spam uh, is what I'm saying. Uh, and finally, uh, the top uh, voted in uh, questions. Um, you can see, I'm sorry, you were saying? Oh, sorry, there's just a delay. I, I, it doesn't pay to what? It doesn't pay to what? It doesn't pay to spam, to, to spam the board. Oh, to spam it. Yeah, you got it, got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, the spamming doesn't pay because spamming don't get you votes. And if you don't get votes, you don't get this uh, placement on the top. So a lot of it's the, the placement of the, 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 the real estate dedicated to the things that are voted above the fold specifically and the very little placement given to you. But then how do you have people scanning the kind of latest questions to sort of... It, it's on their them? phone. It's on their phone. It's, it's not using phone. the projector. Oh, I see. Right. So, Is this so a real one right now? Can I actually join, join Slido.com and... On my phone uh, if now. you if you I don't know scan the QR code you can probably join it although um, let, let's see if, if it's still active I can easily reactivate that just a second um, and and we also use Slido for uh, like real-time voting and polling so um, this uh, real meetings across different 32 ministries participation offices are also conducted through Slido, which is important because in the same room, uh, if you have a senior officer and a uh, junior officer reporting to the senior officer, the junior officer would not raise their hand and say something. Uh, but using Slido, and because it's pseudonymous, everybody is using their phone, and the junior officer can uh, just um, input whatever uh, pertinent information without worrying about their senior officer identifying them. Uh, so a, a sense of pseudonymity within um, the cabinet, within the executive uh, branch, is also designed um, by using Slido as a um, kind of ambient calm technology uh, that uh, brings um, a, a different flavor to the meetings. So now I'm extending the uh, date of the radical exchange conversation. So hopefully uh, you can uh, just, uh, let me just um, change the name of it to add more bits to it kind of literally. Um, so now you can join uh, and the link would be slido.com um, slash 1010101. Yeah, I think um, I moved it now because I just used the QR code and it worked for me. Well, so. well, yeah, the QR code always works. Yeah. Okay, uh, got it. And, and so, so, yeah, and now you can start asking questions and, and your questions will actually go to the recent uh, column, uh, recent line. And so you just say anything and you can be anonymous, pseudonymous, real name, you name it. Okay, I just um, added, and, added a question. Yeah, how can I make uh, Audrey president of Taiwan? Uh, I regret to inform you that the Taiwan constitution say one has to be 40 years old to be <laughs> president. Uh, and I'm not 40 years old uh, yet. Uh, and so uh, this is currently unconstitutional. Uh, and by answering this, I will just uh, archive it and you can see it being uh, archived. So, so that's how it works in practice. So people don't try to flood the system and just start posting lots and lots of questions because I can make the list so much longer than people are able to read. I'm just thinking about all the attack factors in which people try to fuck up the system. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But uh, there's three factors working against that behavior. First, everybody is in the same room. So if somebody use a, and there's only so much spamming you can do with your phone. So if somebody types like crazy into their laptop, uh, the people sitting next to them will probably discover. Uh, and so that's the, the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is that if you make the list longer, it actually sorts automatically by popular parts. And so um, it doesn't really change the, the top questions. That's the second uh, thing. And the third thing is that the moderator is at any time anyway in control. So um, if I detect uh, spamming going on, I can just with a, um, uh, just like literally in a second to switch 
uh, it from a uh, live conversation into a moderated conversation. Or uh, I can just um, have a latest question turned off just by this. And then you don't see the latest questions anymore. Uh, or I can uh, turn on this uh, idea of um, uh, questions um, need to be questions. And so anything then uh, that you reply that are not questions uh, will be moderated away uh, and you have to actually share a genuine question and things like that. So there's, there's many different um, knobs uh, depending on the spamming level. Uh, and for example, now I've turned it into um, moderation only. Uh, and so your new questions don't go in anymore um, and, and so on. And so the, the, the point here is that um, the uh, mechanism uh, can be adjusted in real time in response to the audience behavior and that implicitly discourages spamming behavior. Mm. This so, is, uh, so I can like pause, oh sorry for us. I was just gonna say, so I can, as a moderator, I can pause the submission of new questions. And yeah, it, it, it's already done. So, so now if you enter something, uh, it first goes to the moderation queue. Oh, I see, got it. And it will say awaiting moderation or awaiting review or something like that. So, uh, and finally for identity, um, for different binding power, we have different um, identity schemes. For Slido, you have to show up there to see the QR code. Uh, so that's identity right there. Um, for join, uh, you have to have a Taiwan SMS number. Uh, and the telecom probably did a KYC uh, in the very beginning. Uh, if this has legal binding power, like a referendum, then you need to use a properly state-issued PKI card. Uh, and so it's just a spectrum of solutions. PKI card is that is that the Taiwan ID system? Yeah, it, it, no PKI is just public key uh, infrastructure, and we call oh. it the EID or the electronic ID. It's just this IC card, which also can be virtualized now into your phone using FIDO technology. Uh, and I think one in four people in Taiwan have such a card. Uh huh. Which one in four people in, in Taiwan have what kind of card? A PKI. Uh, yeah, you, you can just search for, for EID. I okay. think the, the proper name is EID. EID. Uh -huh. Just and one really quick, quick question yeah. in regards to the, um, to, to the presentation uh, device here. When it goes to a queue for moderation, are those moderators mm -hmm. on the site where the event's happening, or are they off-site and part of the company that's running uh, Saito? Uh, so uh, of course it's on, on site. Uh, this company doesn't provide moderation as a service. Uh, 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 like in my public conversations, uh, it's usually me moderating using another device. But uh, if the volume is too large, sometimes I enlist a couple of colleagues who does the moderation uh, on a pre-agreed um, way. Uh, and that's how we moderate, for example, a very popular uh, live uh, show with a, a stand-up comedian uh, and the conversation which is also slido driven um, is quite something to behold because uh, people really want to troll the system but our moderators um, really um, just keep the pace and so people eventually surface very insightful questions when you when when you're using the system um, what percentage of the population is is typically asking questions so if I had a group of of 500 people coming to a town hall uh, what sort of volume of questions is that generating for you? In other words, is it that? It's it's a, a very typical Wikipedia curve, right? Everybody votes upvote, uh, like 90% of people uh, participate in the voting part. Maybe 10% uh, do actual ask questions. And I answer maybe only 1% of the total amount of people. So you have uh, 500 people. Maybe I end up answering only questions from five people. The process of answering is, is done in person. So you're just basically responding at the microphone real time. Do the, questions, exactly right. go, mm -hmm. do, do the questions go somewhere and you respond to them at some uh, future point? Or is there is there some way in which the questions get archived and, and treated as? It's, it's always um, archived here. Anybody who has the QR code can go back and see the questions. And in uh, the social innovation tours, uh, which is one particular application uh, of the Slido, we ensure that all the uh, competent authorities 
get you the slide of questions uh, after the fact and publish it on the SI Social Innovation Taiwan platform. So in a sense, um, the unanswered slide of questions nevertheless become part of the meeting and you can see um, a real um, a way of how that works in practice. For example, I would go every other Tuesday um, and some Fridays to the rural indigenous and offshore islands and people there, uh, usually people in their 60s, as you can see here, um, uh, just control the agenda, uh, reporting whatever they want to say uh, from their local vicinity. Sometimes I go there and stay for a day or two in an ethnographic hanging out uh, with the people. But uh, when they do so, there's a Zoom link uh, through cultural translators this is the indigenous teacher doing cultural translation um, and also linking to the five municipalities, including Taipei, where all the 12 um, central government ministries, uh, usually section chiefs, uh, are in the same room, literally. So they all look at the same Slido board and respond uh, as they can on Slido uh, using hyperlinks and also um, I queue them uh, from this facilitator's role. I'm the only one that travels, they are online, but I can queue any public servants in any municipal connecting places so that we feel like we're in the same room and the people there see the public service uh, responding to the questions here and now, thereby increasing trust between them and the public servants don't have to worry about upsetting the local people because you cannot hurt people over a projection. I'm the only one at risk. Um, and so the point here is uh, if there are slight questions that are left unanswered because of time or because of its uh, cross-ministerial business that cannot be resolved right on the spot, then you can go to si.taiwan and see uh, where the slide of question went and we send an email to everybody uh, who uh, proposed such questions so everybody can see the kind of proposals uh, and the social innovation tours and see a database of what slide of questions uh, are currently uh, awaiting uh, ministerial uh, input and usually within 14 days uh, we will uh, yeah 14 days 10 working days uh, we will make sure that these questions get answered on the SI platform by the competent authority so there's also a follow-up component in addition to the agenda setting and the face-to-face -face consult uh, consultation this this is this is wonderful that piece of it's sounding a lot like some of the work that I'm currently doing with this thing called uh, ephemeral group process which is another uh, another whole thing, I, I don't necessarily need to take up your time with that per se, but um, one, one of the key pieces that would be the next uh, sort of layer is that after the questions are answered, you, you, you're, you're providing a, a way for people to find out that those questions are answered. So they're getting a notification via email. Yeah. They're seeing, yes. they're, they're seeing the response. Um, is there some uh, dynamic that, that allows for uh, you know, like a, a kind of, and, and this is, I know you don't want to do follow-up in the sense of uh, providing a way for people to, uh, you know, again, you know, once, once well, again, they, they can just show up community. to the next meeting. I mean, or they right. can just find me on Wednesdays. The, the whole point of this continuous integration is that people can cite a previous unresolved issue and bring it either to the next town hall in their vicinity or travel to Taipei or arrange a video conference with me and talk for 40 minutes at a time on the record. That, that sounds great. So, but, but the questions themselves, so, so you, you actually just answered the question, which was essentially the idea that the answers that were provided to the questions of the previous meeting mm -hmm. are in public record somewhere or another so that people in future mm -hmm. meetings can cite the, the, the mm -hmm. responses from the previous meetings with their new mm -hmm. questions in the future meetings. Yes, and, and, and the SEO is pretty good. And the reason why the SEO is pretty good is that each of those questions and answers uh, literally have their own page. Uh, like, um, not, not really, uh, not only the, uh, its own page, but it's uh, full text searchable. So if you want to know anything related to Tom Atley, for example, I'll just search for Atley, uh, and uh, you can see um, Tom Atley's input uh, into our process. Uh, and actually all the uh, places where I mentioned Atley, as well as Colleen and Miki Kashtan, uh, that was uh, brought uh, with uh, Tom Atley to conversations. And as you can see, each individual line has its own link. If you click into it, that's a page of its own.
That's uh, that's that's amazing. I'm I'm definitely uh, very very interested. So this is this is this is uh, I'm the, basically Tristan. What 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 they've implemented is is something like what my first two layers of of the process that that, that I've been basically in development of, and and, and we're looking at a a manifestation of that actually in, in progress. Uh, one very specific question. So uh, a lot of the responses, if they're coming from meetings or are in in conversation, they're in video and such like that. Uh, but we have a full text search that's going on here. So mm -hmm. somewhere there's a, a, a an audio to uh, text mm -hmm. transcription yes. process. How is that managed? Uh -huh. Well, it's a combination of assistive uh, intelligence uh, and uh, human intelligence. Uh, in places where the microphone is really good, uh, we just use uh, standard off-the-shelf um, speech-to-text technologies and then with co-editing. The co-editing is key because everybody receive a collaborative editor that um, is um, cybersecurity hardened. Uh, and so people know that these draft meeting notes do not goes to public. So you can see, for example, uh, after a conversation with the Christian Science Monitor, this is already published, though I'm, I'm allowed to show it to you, uh, that you can see that um, they uh, basically get a link that uh, then, for example, oh, there's a recent interview with Rana Furuha uh, on, for Financial Times, and that's, yeah. I think, a, a, a better um, example. So uh, then Rana, after the conversation with me, receives a link to here, but this is um, a, not a access control list, this is a share token. So uh, I can see who have accessed it and Rana and I are the only editors. And so you see uh, this conversation um, in a read only mode that says this will be released on uh, February 23rd. Uh, so that's to say two weeks after the conversation and on a public into the commons, meaning that it's relinquishing copyright. And we thank them for the contribution. Uh, and then Rana uh, can then just click edit and just start editing the markdown uh, of the transcript to fix any issues detected uh, by her uh, from our uh, speech to text system. Uh, and so that, that's it. And once uh, she finishes uh, editing, um, then we just publish on this uh, prescribed date. And um, in many different uh, conversations where there is no such a good microphone, we also have uh, professional stenographers, uh, court reporters um, that transcribe this. But of course, there are also online services like Casting Words, which we also use. Um, and so the upshot is that people go through each other's words much more carefully in a asynchronous mode after the meeting again. So uh, if you're busy talking at a meeting, you can nevertheless experience the whole conversation afterwards uh, using reading speed. And that also increases rough consensus. I've had many times where the ministerial delegate after uh, reading through the notes telling me, minister, we don't have to hold another meeting anymore. I actually got the other side's point. Oh. I mean, by, by being able to go back and read it again, they get the point that, that they mm -hmm. didn't get at the time you're saying. That's right. That's right. Yes. This is, uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is actually exactly right. So, so what, what you've just basically demonstrated is, 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 is something that I've been hypothesizing and it's, 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 it's very affirming to see this work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that maybe uh, one, one just sort of kind of logistics question is so, um, you know, when, when you're holding a meeting with specific people that you, that mm -hmm. you know who to ask to be part of that conversation, mm -hmm. um, is there, are there circumstances where you have, um, you know, people that are responding in a meeting, you don't happen to know who they are, or there's a, there's a kind of anonymity factor uh, mm -hmm. in the audio part. Um, is mm -hmm. there a, a crew somewhere or another that does, you know, some sort of consensus, this is the best transcript we can create? Is there, is there a, a, a sort of background process for that that's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's yeah. constructed? That's a great question too. So um, we've tried different ways, but uh, long story short, what we are now doing um, is essentially um, each party contributes their own recording, um, which is easy actually if you have a Zoom-like system where uh, each side do a recording 
themselves anyway. So by hitting a Zoom record, you get uh, audio streams, even if the live streaming isn't working quite perfectly. Um, and uh, on a meeting place, we usually use a centralized microphone system, and then we just uh, record whatever that's going into the microphone. So we also have uh, a crew that reminds everybody to please use the microphone, otherwise their voice doesn't get into the transcript. Um, and so, um, and in even larger meetings, um, we have uh, push to talk. And, and that's uh, what we settled uh, at the moment. If there is uh, no uh, microphone system centralized uh, going on, we discover that it's too easy to misrepresent uh, each other's words. So, so this this whole constellation of of, of capacities. So you have a, a basically a, a collection of software tools. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I've got some of the arc of the overall flow of the process of how meetings are, um, you know, partially in person, and then there's essentially this online component. Mm -hmm. There's sort of discovery of common interests and how that infuses. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. this this dynamic is 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 very good. Is there some um, like how does the government support or how does the public support is there a, a tax base that's used to support the servers mm -hmm. that are hosting the software what, what are the mm -hmm. logistics that, that mm -hmm. provide uh, context for the meeting spaces or mm -hmm. uh, you know to pay for transcriptionists to do the thing or to pay for mm -hmm. those services how is, is this a mm -hmm. it, it, how does that happen in the in the overall flow of, of things is this a mm -hmm. essentially an extra governmental process that's being integrated mm -hmm. or is the government mm -hmm. itself now doing this as, mm -hmm. as part of its own function Right. So um, the V Taiwan, uh, which is a, a social sector process, uh, specializes in finding uh, zero cost ways to accomplish all this uh, by relying on crowdsourcing and artificial intelligence, or as I pr prefer, assistive intelligence. Um, the government, uh, being uh, slightly uh, more stable, uh, uh, allocates dedicated funding uh, for the process within the government. Uh, and so if you go to the uh, PO website that I pasted you, uh, you can see not only the participation offices, but also the enabling regulations um, and so the enabling regulations basically say that each um, ministry uh, that is competent authority um, pays for the uh, logistic costs and the Office of Science and Technology and the National Development Council um, pays for the hosting of the system and the service uh, of the system, which is not a large budget, by the way. Uh, once you have this um, system ready, it's... Um, as simple, it, it's not more expensive than paying for the transportation and accommodation for people to travel to a, a citizens assembly is actually cheaper. Uh, and so, uh, but you can see the directions and principles, um, I think it's called topics process of how those topics are selected and the competent authorities, how they assign the issue uh, within them and who res uh, are um, responsible for which supporting structure and so on. It's all on the website. Um, I've, I've got like maybe a f just a few more questions. I don't want to take up too much time here, but this is, this is turning out to be actually quite important. So we have this sort of discovery of communities. We have a kind of record of the conversations that have happened. I, I mean, I really love the transparency of this. This is, by the way, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, how does it move from these conversations into uh, legislation or into budgets mm -hmm. or into mm -hmm. like what, what ensures that there is a kind of consistency uh, mm -hmm. between the the, the, the the sort of agreements that have been created in the conversations, mm -hmm. um, you know, multi-stakeholder perspective and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's, there's a transition where there's a kind of place mm -hmm. where uh, the community itself says, yes, we have mm -hmm. a, we have a common vision as to next steps. Well, it's easy. I, I talk. I take these and talk to the prime minister, or the ministers in in charge. So, in other words, these 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 conversations become there's there's a transition from the the conversational content into essentially the traditional governance structure, where proposals are made and budgets are essentially defined. But that's a, a specialist group that's essentially composing the exact language of the of the policies and the budgets. Exactly. Uh, and, and that's why my office uh, is delegates from each ministry. So in Taiwan, there's 32 vertical ministries, each with one vertical minister. And I uh, say any volunteer from any ministry, uh, one ministry each, can join my office as kind of official delegates. And this is the core group 
in addition to the peripheral um, participation of this network. Um, and so uh, I must say not all 32 uh, have sent people. I have 20 colleagues, meaning that not everybody sent people. The Ministry of Defense never sent anyone. So uh, our binding power to the Ministry of Defense is weaker. Um, but the <laughs> Minister of Foreign Service, for example, on public diplomacy, sends people. And the people they send are usually around section chief level. But for, for example, the National Communication uh, Commission is a director general. Uh, and so every delegate bring with them their own political cloud. Uh, and by making sure that these processes are co-created by the Korea Public Service delegates, uh, we make Pareto improvements in the sense that all these um, rough consensus with their input is uh, guaranteed to reduce their risk or to uh, reduce their churn to save them time or to improve their credit, credibility, cre improve their trust. Uh, not all in three in the same time, but we never trade one for the other two. So there are always Pareto improvements along the risk, the time saving and the credibility access. And so once they propose such a thing to their minister, they're still reporting to their minister, not to me. I'm just a facilitator. Um, they uh, make a very compelling case. Uh, and then their minister will just um, take these uh, reverse mentorship uh, and from the civil society um, and then bring it into their ministerial agenda, which uh, for petitions, for example, we require the ministers to respond within two months in a point by point uh, basis of which consensus made into the regulation, which consensus needs um, time to wait, usually because of budget cycles and which are against the laws of physics, so we cannot implement them. So is is when when they when a, a budget or a, a policy is brought up to the ministerial level. So there's an authorship thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. There's some reflection back to the sense making that was mm -hmm. done by the uh, by the polis and and by the conversations mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. documentation that's been created. Mm -hmm. um, is there a ratification um, of that policy that effectively involves the direct mm -hmm. vote of the entire constituency, or is it a vote of the? Only, only in the case of presidential hackathon.